Hello. as well. Hello. Hello. And this is Gone Gore TV with George. That was a very weird intro. Hello, people. My, hello, people. Oh, yeah. Usually yeah. I go greetings. Hello. Hang on. Yeah, I Take two. Greetings, hello, the Gorans. And I am with George. Hello, people of internet. My name is George. And uh, sorry if I cough a bit and my throat's killing from the hay fever. Fuck yeah. hay fever. And, um, yeah, we want that <laughs> last week with the... Uh, but the the S O M weekly, the Song weekly, the Shadow of Mordor weekly, the oh, weekly, yeah. yeah, whatever, the whatever, yeah, and um, yeah, we wasn't here because we kind of quite a bit of stuff on really, and um, we didn't have the time. Well, but we've got ten weeks off now. Yeah. So like yeah, with the uh, with the uh, yeah, 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 we've got uh, all the stuff for me through to talk about, and uh, the first day yeah, we got a new gameplay which you would have seen in uh, Angry Joe's interview. In a with uh, Michael De Platier with a uh, in an um, IGN and yeah, there's quite a bit of gameplay that's come come out and it'll be on your video screens now. And have you seen the gameplay, George? I've seen parts. I've seen most of it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what did you think? It looks good. It looks it, good. It does look good. I, but I made the point you made at one time was that the grass looks a bit green. Yeah. It's a bit too green, but. I don't know if it'll affect me that much because I'm not a huge sort of thing, but it do, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks a bit too bright, but um, you don't know what point in Mordor that is. It could be near the Sea of Room when it is meant to be greener, but still, I didn't. It never was described as light green. It was meant. It was still always described as dull and worn down. So, yeah. yeah. So like a uh, oh, that's kind of a disappointment. Where the the combat looks rather epic. Yes, it does. That's one thing I was impressed by. Yeah, we found out that if you can jump from anywhere, so like you can jump off like a, a fifty thousand story building and not die. Because it's like um, die, you can't die. Yeah, that doesn't affect you. Like um, anyway, uh, uh, bow and arrow looks cool. I, I I like bow and arrow. I'll be using bow and arrow. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get to the uh, death situation later on. But yeah, the combat looks epic. The reef things that were that were shown off will look really great. Will look really good and we'll talk about that later and uh, yeah the voice acting was all good from the orcs and the grouping around it, it looked good I, I'm impressed it, it does look very good it really does yeah and plus we get a more in-depth look at the nemesis system and uh, which is the next point which I've slowed on to perfectly and uh, yeah if you don't know what the nemesis system is it is like keeping it keeping it in, like it's like a, a ladder of all the orc in like their hierarchy, so to speak, and and all, they're all the like major orcs are, like have <coughs> many different personalities. Like some are like brave and bold and will fight you. Some are scared and will run away from the sea, and things like that. And like they, they have control, and you can like gain control with you with your wraith abilities, and like move them up the hierarchy to cause a disturbance at the top. That's one thing I found. One thing I like is how like a normal orc can build its way up the ranking. Yeah. Just he by killed. you, just by you ordering him to go over there and kill that guy. And, and also, no, if he kills you as well, I'll well, kill you. And, and, like, it is killing, it. but we re reincarnate, which is my next point after this. Wait, so if if they kill you, he moves his ranking because he's killed someone who's better. Yeah, it, like you're kind of famous throughout Mordor. Mm. And uh, so yeah, but like um, it, it it looks a very interesting way, like a. Uh, Angry Joe said in his interview, like before the game, before we played it, he didn't have much thought on it. Um, he thought he, he saw it was just like another standard kind of Assassin's Creed type game. But then he, he kind of played it and we got really in, involved with it and he said he he was very, very impressed, with, which was his quote, which I've got here. Do we did we do we have any information about free running? Um, I'm free running. Yeah. Um. Not really. You kind of see. Well, I think it is as how it appears. You know, like climbing like that. You know, like shuffling up the. Well, a bit yeah. like a bit Assassin's Creed, -y, Batman, -y, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Yeah. The the, the Nemesis system looks re very very unique. Like I've never seen anything like this done before. It's like a mix between an action Assassin's Creed stealthy game mixed with kind of like a attack a tactical simulator, so to speak. Because you can kind of order like two different orcs to fight against each other, and sometimes he'd win, sometimes he wouldn't. You know what I mean? So like you, you could like say like if you forced it, like if he's building power and you tell him to fight a guy who's like just a slightly above him, he's got more chance of beating him than you would if you order him to fight like the main orc in the whole country. 
so to, so to speak. And plus you can get involved as well by joining them and going up and fight. It looks very fun and interesting, and you can go your own way by just going it alone, or you can control as many orcs as you want and have your own orc army, which is uh, good. And apparently you can have up to 600 people on your screen at once, so that's kind of leading to you to think there's going to be some big ass battle in the in the mm. game. So, um, what do you think, George, about the big ass battle? Big ass battle, cool. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be another. Well, from forty channel for combat I've seen, it seems like the combat flows really, really well from transmission from one person to another. Like Assassin's Creed is always doing that well. When yeah. you assassinate one person, it's really it's fluid to like turn your back and get to kill the other person. And Shadow Marder looks like it does that really well too. And if it's a big battle, that's something you really want because you want to just kill a crap ton of people really quick and fast. But when it happens, like one thing I've always said in Assassin's Creed is about momentum is a huge thing. If you kill one person after another, you're not going to stop. You're going to kill a shit ton of people. Yeah. And I hope, I hope that, I hope that happens in Shadow, Mar- Shadow Marder. But momentum is implemented. So if you, if you're like, yeah, we're gonna fucking kill you all. Because you, you killed like, the past two people really easy. It's just going to keep going and keep going. And you're going to feel like a badass because you just killed like 20 people at once. You're like, ah, oh, you old fat. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it also looks like um, you don't, you're you not just going to be the only one killing everyone. Because the way mm-hmm. this, like, with the Nemesis, is you, you can just sit on the side and actually watch the fight happen instead of in, without getting involved. In both <laughs> getting involved is a choice. Hopefully, they do that well. Because sometimes yeah. when it's AI combat, it can be utter shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes like, it looks like they're it's turn based. Like, I hit you and then you hit me. Yeah, like Elder Scrolls Online. We'll, yeah, but that's how we'll do it. We'll, we'll not have a challenge. I'll let you hit me, but I'll hit you, okay? Yeah. We don't want that. You want, we want it actually looks like they're struggling against each other and stuff. Yeah, and then the clip it showed actually of him, like, kind of, it was just it was a mini battle between two. It was like two. It was like two kind of sort of groups of twelve kind of battling against each other. And there's that. There's this one or who actually chopped like decapitated. The, another orc's head, so it does look like it's not just... Like yeah. we have said in that with TGP, the gaming podcast... Which, which will be out soon. Uh, which will be out soon. Uh, it is the year of decapitation. Decapitation rules all. The hell, I just, dec- I just decapitated my cat. You don't have a cat. Uh, not anymore. Exactly. Not anymore. <laughs> 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 it's, it's joking. It's not, I'm just looking for people go mental. Yeah. You do not have a cat. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah but like saying, a lot of games are having decapitations. And yeah. Well, after the E3, George, what would your excitement of the game be? Out of 10. Yeah, out of 10. It's like... maintained a strong 8. A strong 8? Strong 8. Strong 8. I'm going to put it on a... Fuck it, I'm going the same as Witcher 3 in with a 10. With a 10. A 10. Okay. I, I, I was like excited before, like before and I would say an 8, now that like, I'm excited, but now like uh, after seeing all the stuff go down, it seems again that like I'm just going to be really into. And mm. there's a good five months of heart between that and The Witcher 2, so yeah. I've got like good strong time to play Shadow and more. <coughs> yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to all these games in October, especially Far Cry. If hopefully Far Cry 3 gets me really excited for Far Cry Final. Oh, which I think I'm actually going to do a series on, guys, if, uh, when my graphic card comes. So, expect that on the things. I'm actually going to complete it this time, I promise you. <laughs> I promise you I will complete this Far Cry series. Maybe. Okay, right. And, um, yeah, and we see him in all hierarchies and that. I think we've covered that. So, yeah, um, we actually see how death... Well, basically, death and reincarnation works in the game. Because we, we, we were having the topic on the last episode of, like, how would you die? And George was going, you can't exactly die, though. And then it was like, maybe get captured or something and try to, like, it'll break free. And then it was like, oh, that could work. But we found out. You reincarnate. Yeah, we you get killed and you reincarnate further away. And it doesn't just reincarnate you, like, it doesn't, like, just go back to the last save point or whatever. It actually reincarnates you further ahead of time. So the orc who you killed remembers... You remember like killing makes, you. Makes, like, I've already killed you once. Yeah, like you'll, like you'll, like take the piss or whatever. So like if you can't remember. I'll see if you can get a video to. Yeah, yeah. That I, I, I'll probably, I'll remember. I'll put it in. So like, he'll probably like take the piss and go like, uh, ah, I killed you. Uh, what are you doing back here? Uh, fuck you. And then like, think it's gonna be easy. Or someone will be like worried that you've come back and maybe run away or maybe set other people on you. 
Or maybe you'll just think like, oh, fuck this, and just try and get the shit out of you. There's no loads of different possibilities of what could happen, which is good. But one bad thing is, is that the shit people, George, <coughs> uh, when, when they play the game... Uh, yeah. <laughs> when, when they play the game, when they get killed and they get spawned like a bit away, they're going to get frustrated having to go back like 50 times. Like, mm. That's one thing, but... It seems like the game's going to flow away. It's like, there's no really going back, kind of, to yeah. that save. It's good, like... It's, I don't... That, it makes it, like, feel like... So it's good to something real changing, world. You, yeah. It feels like you are going to re- reincarnate in the future. It doesn't feel like, oh, I'll go redo this whole thing. Yeah. It's, you're going to have to redo it, but a different way. It's different. And plus, they could be in a different location and with diff- different people, so it's not the same battle. It, you, yeah. c- you could even turn away from it. It's not like... That what well, one of Skyrim's weaknesses is that something that everything does is where like it will respawn you kind of like his last save point like a few a and few yards away. Like fuck this. And yeah, then, yeah. And, and you, you, you get you get bored like with this is you're gonna get, be entertained with it. Like Watch Dogs, like I found that boring to be honest with you. And like it just like it just respawns you back where it was and you it's it's another weakness like it's something that like doesn't you, you think's a small thing but it does affect your interest. Like in a bit, it's like GTA. It does it look like that kind of. Yeah, it, you yeah, die, exactly. But you respond in the hospital, hospital in the future. Yeah, yeah, and then like, but if you are doing a mission, then it will spawn you like a little bit behind time. Like it doesn't go away and kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, in Angry Joe's interview with um Michael Duplatier, he um gave us some bad yet interesting news. Hmm. Like um. The bad part is there's no customer, um, cu- customer. And there's no costume customization, mm. so you're always wearing the same costume, like, mm. um, which is like a part which is a part on the wiki it pe- it feed a few people off because they they were one hoping to like make their own gear and wear that and like maybe make it a bit more camouflage and so on. Well, and mm. then um, yeah, but like. Costume, costume customization has never really bothered me. Like, when I play GTA, yeah. there's loads of different costume customization. Uh, the only time I've got change is when it tells me to put a pig mask on or put a suit on. Uh, I'm not bothered. Well, I'm I put wearing. a suit on and then just wear I'd, pick, I'd change once normally and just stick to that fucking suit because I look really bad at it. Yeah, so to me, not big of an issue, but some people are pissed off. I mean, you can see why because it's, it's some people's thing, yeah. All the stuff they've been showing, like, tallying in that uniform, so you could kind of see it coming, really. It's not exactly shocking. Well, um, the interesting part of this news is, he, he said, there's no cos- cos- costume customization, yet there is character customization. What? Yeah, I know. I put this You're down. One guy. To... No, no, he means ca- like you can adjust your character. It doesn't mean you can change your character. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, yeah, I know, but so you can change his hair down. No, no. I, I, let me, I don't think it's anything to do with appearance. I think it's kind of a skill kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, to be honest, like um. He only hinted at it in Angry Joe said after his it skill or skills and our appearance or something like that and he said more more will be revealed when you play the game. So uh, to be honest I think it's going to be skills. I doubt it's going to be appearance because it's had the same appearance in everything. And plus we've seen kind of customization with your weapons kind of thing like that so that might come into it because you're always having the same weapons. Yeah. Yes. It's good. I like, I, skill trees are a bit big. They've worked. Everyone likes how they work. Yeah. It's simple. Skyrim did it. Like, I think Skyrim was one of the, like, I was one of the first games to do it. Skyrim made it even better and simple. And then, like, Watch Dogs has been doing it. Yeah. Assassin's Creed Unity is going to do it. Uh, yeah. <coughs> GTA that's... kind of did it. Yeah. A little Last, bit. Last of Us is doing it. Yeah. So, like, yeah, more, more games are doing it. It's not exactly a bad thing. Like, I've got Infamous do it as well. That's one lot different abilities, Infamous 2. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Infamous do it as well. So, it's a good, it's a good system. Like you, like you're getting rewarded for, for achieving things. Like you're not just like getting your skills buffed. You can unlock different things. Like with archery and in Skyrim, you can have eagle eye where you can zoom in more, or like you, your attacks get twenty percent better, or your health regenerates faster, and things like that. So um, yeah. So like it, it's little perks that benefit you for do for like achieving something, which is good. Mm. And um, good, uh... on an interview with uh, IGN, Michael Duplatier said. And uh, they had to make up nearly 20 different cinematics for each section of the game. So for each, where do you know what point when you get to a cinematic? A cinematic. Yeah. yeah there's, like, there's 20 different possible cinematics <coughs> for that for that, that point, but in the main story because it depends on what path you take in the game. 
So it's, it's got, it seems like it's gonna have a lot of replayability out for this. It does, yeah. And um, plus, um, plus when you when you do replay the game, all the orcs have different names. So like it re, it does it on like a kind of rolling basis with like a lot of different names. So like you know like you'll never meet the same orc again, so to speak. So no one's gonna go. Oh, have you killed him guy? And you're like, well, the fuck's him? Who's he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So like when you do replay the game, it's you, you can take you can turn it really into a completely different game. Like one way you can go in effing stuff up just going in yourself and another time you can go in really tactically and trying to mastermind the situation so like uh, yeah there's like loads of different ways to go into it and like like, and it's like you said like they've said in every interview it's like a lot of they have no two playthroughs are the same which is what you want really you want something you want a game that's going to be interesting and be replayable I agree yeah and uh yeah, we uh, we do see more of a storyline with uh, in that IGN interview when he says um, at the be- at the beginning of the game, like the first half, you are killing stuff and kind of understanding your powers more. But then in the second half, you do when you fully understand your eighth abilities, then you do start manipulating orcs. And that second half of the game is like he described. He said it's his favorite, and then a different developer said the first half is his favorite. So it sounds like it differs, it differs on opinion. Oh, that was just set up. Mm. Yeah. Great. Oui. So, uh, you got any views on that, George? No, not really. Yeah. I'm ha- yeah, I agree with you. So, like, yeah, he kind of sees, like, a gradual basis. I hope it's a little too gradual, like, like you yeah. understand your rate abilities. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I don't want really, don't, don't really to be too so. Yeah, you want, it to, you want it to have pace, like, maybe a while to, like, if you're having just two or three, and then you realise that you can use others at a time and then do it that kind of way but like if you if you play smartly you deserve to get all the things then I mean yeah yeah if you use everything right then you kick ass you should get them quicker kind of thing yeah and um yeah and um we did see a lot more wraith stuff like uh um like when it, with the arrows and like using it as a transportation area and like mm. and um we also saw it climbing like jumping through the building and getting behind the orc and chopping his head off decapitation again <laughs> And, uh, 2014 for you, okay, decapitation. Yeah, there was one where the, 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 my favourite one. He was like on the floor and he used his arrow to get behind him. And when he got behind him, he just kicked him off the, he kicked him off the, uh, the top of the thing. And he went flying down. You could hear the orc screaming, and he landed on another one, and they both died. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, yeah, that's like you just you, that's when you put your pet pies and just walk around with your hands and like yeah, and like. I was fucking my ass. Yeah, I deserve that. And then, he, and then, like, and then they were all looking around on the floor. And then he jumped down, like, and landed a somersault in the air. And he landed on his feet. And then he just beat the shit out of them all. <coughs> so, yeah, there's like, like, like you control locks, like you can as well. So that's another possibility of the game. And like, we saw loads of races. Like, we saw the use of fire arrows, and which is an upgrade system for the skill tree. We saw um, we saw more controlling of orcs, like. We saw one assa- like assassin another one like he just put his hand on him, and like go ahead and do it that way. And we also manipulate a varg which we didn't see before, which is brand new. So like he just jumped on a varg and manipulated him to ride him, and then he like got off him and it was still under his control. So he was killing all the orcs that wasn't in his control. Yeah. Uh, so um yeah so like all good at E three for me. It is really yeah. it was all good. A lot of information making the game look better and better. Yeah and um. There's more, there's been uh, more people going onto the wikia page, the Shadow Model wikia page. Good. Apparently, all it, people, all the people watching, don't forget to subscribe. We're, we're one off seventy five. Yeah. Apparently, um, apparently the view, the viewing people and the, um, and then the subscribing people who are like have account on the Shadow Model wikia nearly doubled after E three. So it seems to have a positive response. So yeah, that if all the new people just quick notice if you want to check over re- past news which we've gone over. We have got previous episodes, so check them out. Yeah, and for the old ones... Have you ever played this? Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all in a playlist. And for the old ones, we may be getting, like, some of the questions that, like, are maybe obvious to you now, maybe again until... For for a couple for another couple of months, because, like, they're new to the kind of series. And so, yeah, I, like, I know there's one new one called Pseudopet, which uh, is a question which George is going to ask now. Questions, George? He's going to open Skype. Uh, Grind the Great. He's back again. G- great guy. Yeah, have you? You better subscribe, dude. You, I, th- you think? He, I think he has subscribed. You must have anyway. It'd be nice if you have. Cause you're asking all his questions. You're watching videos, and you like our videos. So, like, watching. 
Glyme the Grey, can you explain how a dying situation works? We've, we've, we've gone yeah. through that. Next question. Mark Var, do you think it was wise for this game to be set in the Lord of the Rings universe? Yeah, this has been a debate for quite the... Uh... For quite the E3 interviews and magazine articles that have kind of gone out saying that like this game could have been as good if it was in a different area. Why should it be in the Lord of the Rings universe? I think it's because simple. simple. The title Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Shadow Mordor. It bring more people in. They oh Lord of the Rings. They recognise Lord of the Rings. They'll buy it because it says Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that, that's that's one situation. But another one that I thought of was that. They said it's called Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, and that Middle Earth is kind of opening an, up a new franchise in that area. So maybe they've got the might. Uh, this is just a, a speculation. I'm not saying it is, but they might have plans for like future games, which is more relevant to Lord of the Rings. And plus, it's in that time period of between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings where Mordor's constantly changing in a world that is changing. So and plus, it's got it's made by a New Zealand game company, and they love Lord of the Rings. They're like fucking obsessed with it. Like when they when they were making the films, they had a minister in Parliament called like the Lord of the Rings, like budgeting from the Parliament from the government and that. So like the the, the man on it over there. So it, I don't see it as a bad thing. I see it as a massive benefit for Shadow of Mordor to be set in Lord of the Ring, Lord of the Rings. But uh, yeah, someone said um, I, I knew we were like messing with law because like, we've never heard of any of this kind of race people go along, and then you could, the guy just kind of poned him with books where it's been made before like the summer really. Ah, so. I don't give a shit if it breaks law. Like any game, if I was obsessed with a series and it broke law, if a game's good, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck law. If a game's good and interesting, it's just bend the rules a little bit. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you want it to bend the rules a little bit, but you don't want it to like, bend completely like, uh, like, oh, look, Gandalf died. Oh, like, uh, or like, uh, Boromir lived to be a, a Varg or something like or some shit like that. You want like, it to, to be, you want it to be as close as possible. Yeah, so uh, should we go to the next question? Yeah, can you? I can hear you, but it's very different. Hear me? I can hear Hello? you. I can hear you. So we just went weird then. Uh, Sudapet, is there another? Whoa, you missed a question! George? I can't hear you. Sorry about this, we experienced some technical difficulties. George, change something. Wow. What? Can you only ride rags after you put them under your control? There we go. And, um, well, it looks like, yeah, to be honest with you. It doesn't look like um, you can just jump on a rag and ride it. It actually looks like it has to be under your control because they do respond to orcs, and we're not an orc. We are an, a wraith man, so they're not going to respond to us, so it looks like you have to put them under your control. So, yes, a wiki user. Go on, George, next question. George? Go on, George. George? Mode from this game, that is from Sudapet. Oh, is it doing online mode for this game? No. Like, like I said before, the old question, it kind of come out a while ago and there is no online mode for this game. Sorry. In what language is uh, from Robot, which is another person I think, I've never heard of him. No, oh, new one. In what language is this, ge is this game in? Um, I had to look this up and there's an article by Gaming Boy which actually came out over a month ago and it's in English, Spanish, Italian, French, German, Chinese, Arabic and Portuguese. So a lot of them... Did he say English, Spanish, Italian, French, German, Chinese, uh, Arabic and Portuguese? Yep. This guy. Oh, is that the answer you put in brackets? Yeah, that's the answer. Oh, I thought that guy just had a random guess. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, fuck me, this guy's got a good guess. <laughs> no, I put it in a bracket, so yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't like, quickly read I it thought, off. I thought you meant, as, like, you put, for example. No. <laughs> So uh, we're going to the last question. I think Christian's... We, he's been here before. Or is, was he Christian Rodriguez? But he's, or is it a different guy? Uh, I don't know, but Christian asks, with the upgrade in the rune system, what is the highest level? Uh, the highest level is epic. It goes from beginner to amateur to... I, think, <coughs> I can't remember the next one, but the last two are master and epic. Master and epic. So... 
And that's pretty much it, and everything. I think that's it for this video. The inspirational music is starting now. So, yeah, I think it's been a good video. Good way, good feedback from E3. Would you agree, how, George? How long has it been? 25 minutes. I think that's pretty decent for channel models. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you are interested in joining the Freedom Network, the fill link in the description. They do ask for over 1,000 views per month. And also, subscribe to join the fill in the comments. Goodbye. Bye.